Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Dark Souls Remastered. We're probably going to finish off this playthrough in this episode. and uh, But I'm going to get a few little tidbits done before doing that. Like, um, going to... Uh, right, I need to, go, I need to go and get power within. I don't think I've actually... I skipped the... Uh, I, oh, I skipped the uh, one place. Well, there's no real reason to go there. Actually, I think it's faster to get power within if I just kill the uh, gaping dragon and run back. Ooh, decisions. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so what's the fastest way to go in there? I'm pretty sure I already opened the door. The shortcut door. And if I haven't, I'll just book it from there. Uh, let's get the long sword back on. But yeah, we're gonna go get power then, and then we're going to. There's one more thing. What, what was it? What was the other thing I was gonna do? Oh, I got until I get power within to remember. Uh, oh yeah, now I remember. That was quick. Uh, I want to turn in all the dragon scales I can to Dragon Covenant. See if I can get the Dragon Torso Stone because that could also be very handy if I want to try and like nuke the boss. <laughs> yeah, you know, just for the lulls. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, last episode, as I was going to talk a lot about comparing the other Souls games and stuff. And keep in mind, this is all my opinion. Uh, I, I express it often as fact. Do not worry. I am aware it is not fact. Uh, I just, I am, I feel very strongly about my opinion. Let me put it that way. And I don't think, I don't think lesser of people who have different opinions. Let me get that out of the way, too. But, uh,. Personally, in terms of in terms of PVE, I liked Dark Souls one the best. It had a lot of flaws, but I liked it a lot. In terms of PvP, Dark Souls 2 can't be beaten in my opinion. It just did so many things so right. It's also probably the only Souls game that has relatively balanced magic. I mean you have Dark Souls 1 and everyone's using Dark Beat, and you have Dark Souls 3 where everybody who uses spells also dies in one hit because holy fuck. You can't be an effective mage in PvP in that game unless you're a glass cannon. Oh, huh. thought I heard something landing by me. Um, and it's mainly because of the spell variety in Dark Souls 3. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like, like light hitting attacks in Dark Souls 2, but they also had the benefit of kind of being almost like control spells. Like you hit him with a move, and it wouldn't hit him that hard, but it can stagger them, so allowing you to follow up. And there's a lot of other things like that that allowed you a lot of control. Like situation control in Dark Souls 2. They were good for PvP. Like the like the Arcane what was I don't know what it was called. It's like an arcane storm thing. Made a lot of really light hitting attacks from the from the sky. That can that can stun people and can be useful in conjunction with like other close range ones, like the the blade spells and stuff like that. The way hexes work were were cool and unique and I liked it and stuff like that. It just and the, all the damage felt kind of right. I mean, honestly, I felt like I felt like uh, the direct damage things, like sunlight or like like sunlight spear and stuff like that, getting nerfed was kind of unnecessary because those are probably the hardest ones to get hit by. And honestly, if you got hit by, you kind of deserve to get killed. But uh, but you know, they didn't get nerfed to the point where they were useless, so that was good. Plus, people got better at hitting them hitting people with it, so I guess I guess in a way the nerf was kind of preemptively somewhat balancing. I, I still feel it was a little much, but either way, imagining that game is probably is probably the best for PvP because I think they understood that magic doesn't necessarily have to be 100% 100% about damage uh, or that magic can, extends to more than just this is the direct hit move and this is like the shotgun blast move, etc, etc. And then, like, give one class the AoE. They had, like, so many different kinds of AoE moves. And they had, like, so many different kinds of direct attack moves and stuff like that. Oh, the, the mage is alive. Well, okay, we'll just nuke him. Uh, oh, wow, we can actually get Solaire. Even this far in the game. Fuck it, why not? Um, maybe Solaire will get hit by the mage bunch. But, uh... I mean, think about it. I'm trying to think about how many AoE moves there was. It was like Heavenly Storm, 
There was that mage one that I think got, came into the DLC, which was like a little AoE pillar blast thing. Uh, the, the, the hail, the magic storm thing was also kind of like an AoE. It's more board based on crowd control, which is, which is fine. I mean, that's just a different use for an AoE. Uh, dark magic had like two. It had like the thing where the things come out of the ground, and it also had the one where it circled the user. But it also kept the user stomach, but it also hit really hard. Or animation, not stomach. But yeah, and they all had like the different like little pros and cons, and it was cool. I was worried about this? Okay. Is he? Oh, I forgot he buffs the dragon. Holy shit. Oh, so Larry is keeping him busy. And he's dead. I forgot that he buffs the dragon. That's crazy. I haven't fought the dragon with him up in a long time. Or maybe I did it in an earlier playthrough, but I was just like, wait, never mind. And Homer boned out. I forget. But yeah, damn. That's cool that he buffs him. Kind of like a, it's almost like a Demon Souls throwback. Where with, uh, wait, was it this one? Yeah, okay. It's so dark, it's hard to see. Almost like a Demon Souls throwback where there's like that one guy you have to kill before fighting that one boss because he revives the boss. <laughs> I should also join the forest hunters and buy out that dude's weapons. Yeah, once I get power within, I'll head to the forest hunters. I'll buy out the dude's weapons uh, in Blight Town. Also, I don't think I have the ninja flip ring, do I? No, I have to get that. Did you get that? Yeah, I think you murdered his ninja buddy and he drops it, so. I'll have to get that after I buy the weapons from him. I just need to get the look skyward emote from him. Oh shit. I can't believe I still don't have that. Um, and then after I do that, I'll kill him, which will get me kicked out of the Forest Hunter Covenant, which I don't care. Not like I'm going to invade anybody as a Forest Hunter. I'll only get invaded by Forest Hunters, and, uh... And then I'll need to... Go to the Dragon Covenant. See if I can get the Torso Stone. I don't know if you need 10 or if you need 30. You might need 30. I might actually hold off on that for like another playthrough. Where I like to try to farm up as many of those as possible. Oh yeah, this is where I usually go. To avoid some of those enemies. I gotta say, learning that you can set L3 to jump is my favorite thing <laughs> ever. I shall also repair a quick line. Oh, this is fucking, no, this is just fine. Uh, I do have a... Uh, yeah, okay, I do have those on me. No big deal. I should... Why am I not using my bot? In an area like this? Oh. I actually meant to hit the L1. I don't know why my brain was like, Square! That's the same... Oh, no, 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 no! Okay. That was a one shot. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. I thought I had to get a little bit closer before he'd get pissed off. I also forgot how he attacked you, so that came as a surprise to me. I thought he like flopped his body around. Well, let's just go ahead and grab that real quick. I need to worry. About, I don't need to worry about going human stuff. I can't be invaded here. Well, I'd be dead, yo. Ow. Ow. for the dragon. Yeah, I'm gonna wait till like another playthrough to do that. Oh god. Manual aiming, please. I know I can just wog this guy. Pretty sure. I just need to not get as close as I did last time. Oh, oh. Son of a bitch. Fuck okay, it, I'm just gonna play it safe and uh go upstairs and go around. 
I should have I should have attuned uh, lightning spear when I died. I just huck those at him. Oh wait, he was it's right behind me. I never notice him when I go up the ladder. I think he's like in the darkest area up there or something. So it's hard to notice him. Okay, guys, I'm here to fuck him up. I must have hit him with the other logs because of the uh, I'm dying in one hit there. Kind of, kind of unbelievable to me. Even even if it was a 50 faith dark moon talisman log. I think that was everything I wanted to get. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Force Hunters, duh. Um, and perish, here we go. Hello, Patch is the elite knight, Zweihander wielding pantless man. I'm still not gonna bother going human just because I can't, I can't be invaded here until that Sif is dead. Uh, but, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, I was talking about the other, uh, Souls games and stuff. Like, I already mentioned Dark Souls 2 and how I think mechanically I want the most well put together. The, the the movement feels kind of floaty, but I feel like that's only become from the other Souls game. Uh, other Souls games. Uh, on the directional rolling can feel kind of floaty when it's usually so restricted. But, uh... I mean, you know, when it's restricted in the other games, I mean... Uh, Dark Souls 3 I thought was fine. It was one- it was- it, the thing it was like, yep, this is a Souls game. That was really it. The Weapon Art system was really cool to start with, but after a while you're just kind of like, I never really use these. They're kind of for niche situations. Uh, and half the time the ones that are used the most are the ones that are spammed in PvP because they're usually very difficult to avoid. So when you use it on newer players, you're pretty much guaranteed to win. You know, like Gundyr's Halberd. If somebody can't parry you and they get hit by that, they get stunned through the whole thing and they get knocked the fuck over. And then you can use it as they're getting up and then they try to roll away and then they get caught by it because it's not how you're supposed to avoid it most of the time. I mean, you can avoid it that way. But then they just caught again and then they get knocked over again and then just rinse repeat until they're dead. And that's Gundyr's Halberd. Uh, and there's a lot of other weapons that are like that where it's, you know... And I feel like it didn't it didn't change the ultimate thing that is Dark Souls PvP and that is spacing, uh, spacing your attacks properly, because that that still ended up being all it was about. Like there was a few things where it was like, aha, I gotcha, I tricked you. You know, I had this special move that let me, you know, like with uh, the stomp move with the great swords. Sometimes you can trick people by using that to get those uh, hyper armor frames that also give you a bit of reduced damage. And uh, or did that did the stomp give you reduced damage? I know perseverance did. But that was the thing, they didn't they didn't add that much, they weren't seen super often. They didn't make that big of an impact and uh Yeah, the weapon arts I mean I'm glad they were there. They were something extra there that could be used if if you wanted to. But I felt in PvP they kinda added more they added they t they actually that's not that they added they they took away the need for skill in a lot of aspects, because there's a lot of times you can just use them until they work, essentially. Like, I remember, uh, the Warden Twin Blades, if you put, like, the bleed resin on that, you can just keep running other people and spamming your weapon art until you manage to, to kill them. Because you couldn't parry that weapon art. Uh, you could bleed people through their shield, so blocking and parrying wasn't particularly safe. All they had was the dodge. And if you stag poise, they couldn't really trade hits with you either, because weapon arts gave you, at least after they patched it so that poise did something, uh, weapon arts gave you, like, all your poise, uh, when you started a weapon art. So there was that. <laughs> I'm also sick of how many people are still debating whether poise fucking works or not. It's like, it's not hard to experiment yourself. When the game first came out, poise flat out didn't work. You can experiment with- you, you, I experimented with that myself, there was nothing that would get it to work. Uh, hyper armor frames would work, which I think a lot of people confused for poise. Uh, I remember, I actually remember I got in this argument with somebody about poise when the game first came out. And I was telling them it didn't work, and they were like, they were so dead sure it did work. And it was a, it was right towards the end of the argument, I realized I was arguing with a complete idiot. 
who actually thought they were, who who clearly didn't even know what the hell they were talking about. It was like um, it, it was because they said one thing, and I was telling them it's like, look, you're probably you're probably mistaking hyper armor for poise. Look, I'll take off. Uh, here, here, look, I, I have this clip of me hitting a, a Dark Knight while not wearing any armor with the Black Knight Great Axe. Uh, and you can see I don't get staggered because I hit him during the right frames. And then he, li he literally said this back. He was like, I don't see how you can possibly have no poise when you have a Black Knight Great Axe, but okay. And it's just like, <laughs> weapons don't give you poise. Are you fucking stupid? <laughs> it was at that moment I realized, oh, oh, you're just dumb. Or, well, not dumb, arrogant. You're just arrogant. Or ignorant. Yeah, ignorance is the word. Sorry, not arrogant. Like, oh, you're just, like, really ignorant, but you're super sure that you know what you're talking about. Gotcha. Just, ugh. How, there's, there was so much misinformation spread about poise in that game. And, you know, it's honestly, it, it has to do with a lot of Dark Souls. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to talk him back at the camp first. This is actually fine. This won't be a huge setback. I think. Um, because there's so many videos of people who, you know, like, they do Dark Souls videos, and there's so many videos of people who put out information that's incorrect, but then th when they realize that it's incorrect, half the time they don't even take down that video, and they'll post another video that's like, Oh, sorry guys, this was actually wrong, etc, etc. And the thing is, why are you not taking down the first video? Is it because it's more views and thus more money for you? If people see that video and then get linked to that next video, etc, etc. You should sh just straight up take down the first video. That's like... That's kind of shitty. You're just, like, There's so many people that still think Poise... There's so many people that thought Poise was a thing because of a, a video where um and i think he took down that video like later on but like i know he didn't right away because that, that video was still up when i checked i forget his name i think it was like judas or something like that and i mean not the shit on the guy i mean I, i've seen two instances where he put out incorrect information or 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 he put out correct information but it wasn't conveyed in a good way that led to some confusion uh, and the first one was when he was talking about Poise in Dark Souls 3. He was like, okay, after putting on all this armor, let's see. Ah, it seems like Poise worked, but all it really affects is, like, your roll or something like that. Because, uh, you know, in the video, he was getting hit at the end of his roll. And he wasn't getting staggered. So it seemed like that was all it was doing. But later on, it was shown that uh, that uh, that wasn't because of Poise. That was just because he had a lot of equipment. Like, your equipment load itself uh, affected you. got staggered out of a roll. And... That was proven by having somebody equipped with very heavy weapons and uh, having no armor on, and they wouldn't get staggered uh, out of a roll. Uh, and maybe maybe that's why maybe that's why that one idiot thought uh, that poise w was something you'd still have with the black hand great axe. Maybe he mistook equipment load for poise or something, or thought it was like the same thing. I don't know. All I know is that you fucking wasted a ring slot on the wolf ring for until they patched poise. So you know. Um, because he was talking about how great the ring is. Uh, and I, you know, when I, when I first saw that video, I thought, okay, well, the Wolf Ring seems to actually have some use then. I, there's a lot of times where I can get shipped at the end of a roll. It'd be nice to not get stunned there. But then, you know, I realized, that, no, wait, it's not true. And I, 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 I don't think, I think you took it down pretty quickly, but you should take down a video before you put up the fixed video. And I think the most recent one was Dark Souls Remastered. He was talking, and this is the one where I'm saying, like, it, what he was saying was technically correct, but the way it was, con it was conveyed, it was really bad. Um, he was talking about how you need to make sure you have your shield down when you try to backstab something. Which is, uh, and the, but the thing is, the whole reason he was making that video, and the whole reason he thought that was because, um, and I mean, it, it was correct, but the, the entire reason he thought that was because there was a guy trying to backstab him on the uh, elevator in Orlando, and he just couldn't seem to get backstabbed there. And, uh... So he attributed it to the guy having a shield up, because he was having a shield up for the most part. He was putting it down at the last second, if you paid very close attention to the video. Um, but that wasn't the reason he wasn't able to get backstabbed. It was because you can't backstab people on platforms that can potentially move in the environment. So like the Enrolando elevator, because that can goes up and that goes up and down in twists, 
um, the stairs and the Duke's archives you can't get back that going because those those twist around, etc. etc. But you do need to lower your shielding going for backstab, but it caused a lot of confusion, I feel. There we go, I got my little sky jester. Do we have a clean version? Well we do now. I already have a shawl. Do I have I don't think I have a new katana. Wash and pole. Actually, yeah, two of those. Come on, dual wield them. Demon Red Axe, I don't know if I have that. Let me get one. Claw, let's get two of those. One for each hand, just in case. Demon Spear. These would go. I see. Hmm, you have a shop, I have a trinket too. Hmm. Oh, now here's what we're gonna do. I don't want to power within on these guys. Well, that's unnecessarily risky. But I will do this. Oh god, the ninja got knocked so far away, it spawned his ring over here. Oh no, oh no, can I... Okay, that's why I was worried I couldn't get it. Jesus. You see that though? It was like he got hit there and it didn't know where to put him, so it just kept propelling him that way. So weird. Yeah, you know, wow, so wacky. Uh, also, we're going a little over time, but if I start the next, if I end this episode and start the next one, it's just going to be killing Gwyn and then starting the next playthrough. And I'd rather the next playthrough be started at the very beginning, fresh on an episode. So we're, we're going to go like three or four minutes over this one just to make sure we kill Gwyn. Breaking my own rules. Oh yeah, and I, I talked about how I thought Bloodborne was like the worst game ever last time, and I didn't really elaborate um, that much. I just felt Bloodborne's mechanics didn't work in tandem with each other, uh, and it's the fastest paced game like that that they made, but also has the least consistent frame rate, which really fucks me up a lot in that game. And also kind of makes it a little nauseous to play sometimes. I mean, I know it's like, you can just get a PS4 Pro, but, you know, I already paid hundreds of dollars for my PS4. Why should I pay for a better version for a game that should have been designed to run well on the base version? Because kind of a dick move to design something to run. And even then, the PS4 Pro wasn't out at that point, so they have no excuse to not have made it run well. I should go human and see if I can get invaded while running there just for, like, one last time. And I know there's a lot of people who's like, oh, I don't see the frame rate issue. I think, I think most of the time when people say that, I think they're people who are accustomed to playing console games pretty frequently. And so they're used to 30 frame rate. So when it dips a little below 30, it's not a big deal. When you play at 60, usually, because you play on PC a lot, and uh, if something goes in that 30, that's usually tolerable because, you know, you know, I grew up playing games that were mostly 30 FPS because I grew up playing a console. And, you know... Growing up, I know a lot of people didn't necessarily always have a good gaming PC, so their games would run at, like, maybe 30 to 40 on PC. So there's a lot of scenarios where people could be running at a lower frame rate than they're accustomed to uh, growing up. So I think they were kind of used to 30 frame rate for the most part. Or at least more accustomed to it. But once it dips below that, I feel it just becomes way more noticeable. Yeah, I saw the save symbol over there, and I got a little excited. I was like, ooh! An invasion to top off the top off this playthrough. Damn. Now if I use power within I can probably one-shot these guys. I'm gonna save it for win though. Also, I felt the way that they handled stats in that game were kinda weird. Like uh you know how in the in all the Souls games, the biggest like damage gain you get is usually between 30 and 40 of a stat because you know it ramps up because of uh it, it you know it ramps up because you have to invest points to really get the most out of it in bloodborne unless they changed it since i last played which was over a year ago so who knows but uh, in bloodborne you get the biggest gains from your whatever your base stat is for your class to level 25 i think it was so there wasn't much of an, there wasn't as much of an as of an incentive to go really high with your damage stats, which also kind of made it so quality weapons like the uh, what was it called Ludwig's Greatsword, Ludwig's Holy Sword, it made that weapon stupidly strong 
because it's a lot easier to get two stats at 25 than it is to get one stat at 40, just because, you know, since your base stat for a lot of things is like roughly on about 10 on average. Do I have this armor? I feel like I do. I feel like I ran over and picked up on the first playthrough. Yeah, okay. Because, you know, the thing is roughly start at about 10 base stats, so getting two things to 25 requires you getting 15 of both, which is 30, which is actually would mean it's 30 for both, but you get the biggest gains going from your base stat to 25. Again, at least when I played, I have no idea if they changed it. And you had slightly more diminishing returns going from like 30 to 40 and stuff like that. Which, you know, made me think, why would I use anything but a quality weapon in this game? I can invest minimal stats getting each to 25 and then just wreck house with them. Or maybe scaling just worked differently in that game. Maybe maybe quality weapons actually just had better gains at lower levels, like I, like I constantly say they should have in like this game. Maybe they just did it right and I didn't realize it. Who fucking knows, but that was the impression I got of the game when I played it. Quality weapons just seemed like way better. Uh, imagining that game is also complete ass. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that will play it and they kind of like it, and maybe it works if you invest a lot of time into it. But trying to play through... The thing is they don't give you enough spells right from the get-go to make playing through the whole game with that worthwhile. You kind of have to just change to that. Which I never like. I don't know, it just, the whole thing just kind of felt like a mess to me. Nothing seemed to... It, it didn't seem to be easy to, to know what you wanted in that game. Or it didn't seem, it didn't seem easy to get the setup you want in that game. Whereas in all the other games, it's really easy to get the setup you want. It's just maybe hard to make it, make it good. You know what I mean? Like. All the Souls games, you want to be a mage, you pick a mage, and you, you have spells. You know, uh, pick Bloodborne, I think you, you can get kind of a mage class. I don't think you start with any spells, though. You have to get one first. Oh god, that was a quick attack. I thought I had my shield up. Well, Quinn, this hasn't happened in a long time, but you've bested me today. I also, I mean, and this isn't even a Souls thing, this is a thing I dislike in a lot of games. I hate when games make it so that an enemy has a hitbox, like one that, the one that damages you, not like, not like you can hit them here and it counts as a hit. I hate when enemies damage you because they moved and they happen to touch you when they move, despite it not really being an attack. And that's particularly annoying in Souls games, uh, or that's particularly annoying in a game like Bloodborne because their idea of aggressive in that game's design is two things fast paced and making it so that shit doesn't stop moving that's, i would argue to death that's not what aggressive is but i'd say that's just fast paced and constantly not moving i feel like aggressive is more like when you have to take a yeah when you have to take a more decisive and high damage approach to a situation to, to like for example uh, Defensive gameplay in this Souls game is kind of like you 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 kind of understand the situation You get behind your shield and you wait for the right moment to attack. I feel like aggressive gameplay Is when you still stop to understand the situation before going in You kind of plan out what you want to do and then you rush in to try and execute it quickly and Make it work essentially as well as rewarding you for for doing these things well and the closest thing they have that in Bloodborne is the health regen thing, but even then, you have to get damage for that. To, you have to get damage for that to even apply, and it doesn't give you that much health back. So I don't really feel like it does anything other than maybe save you a few blood vials over a long-term fight. Because you know, if you, if you take a lot of damage and then you hit and you get a little bit of health back, if your health's still down to like like half health, you're probably going to pop a blood vial anyway. Because you know you're still not going to get healed. I, I think you might be healed in that game from blood vials. It's like more like forty percent per blood vial, something like that. So as long as you're at like half health or lower, why would you want to not use a blood vial? You're still using a blood vial after that. Because I mean, especially a lot of enemies hit you so hard in that game, you generally want to stay topped off. So even after you, even after you take damage and get some health back, you usually end up just using a blood vial anyway. I feel like that system in the game doesn't really do much. And I'm talking about like a character where I actually invested a lot of points in health, especially after, I, especially when I realized that blood vials heal you based on the percentage, which thank God. Probably one of the smartest game design decisions they made in that game was making so that healing items healed you based on a percentage rather than uh, healing you a set amount that can be upgraded. 
because at that point, if, if your game plays like that, then all you need to do is get your health high enough to not get one-shotted, and then just heal whenever you get hit. Because as long as you don't get one shot, especially in this game, like, you heal so fast, just whoop, healed. Dark Souls 3 was even faster, and you can move while healing. It's crazy. Um, when it's designed like that, all you need is enough health to not get one shot, and then you're all set. Bloodborne actually encouraged you to get more health uh, by healing based on percentage, because the more total health you have, the more you would get healed. So you can, you can technically make your healing more effective. Damn it! Just heal up while he's getting up. That was actually really. I actually fucking. It was probably, it's like I, I'm. I'm always a stickler for like saying how much I love these mechanics and games that are like seem to go completely unnoticed by everyone else. Like, God, I loved how I loved how you got healed based on a percentage. That changes everything. Other people are just like, I really like the effect, which I actually really do like the effect. That's probably my favorite part about Bloodborne, which is how it looked in terms of the environment. Just didn't like the gameplay that much. I mean, I liked it the first time. But that's because I was kind of more forgiving the first time. If something like happened, I was like, oh, okay, it's just um rando glitch that doesn't usually happen no big deal or he was like oh i got lucky but you know then you play through the game and again you're like oh oh no that's how that's mental oh i don't like that etc so you know what i mean i was happy to have my hands on like another from soft souls like game but uh yeah anyway dark world ending obviously The <laughs> yeah, jump at the end. But again, that's just my opinion on Bloodborne. People fucking love that game. And, you know, don't let my opinion ruin it for you. Not that it should. Um, Bless thy safe return. But, uh, you know, that's a, th that's a thing. I'm going to like what I like. I, I wish I liked Bloodborne. Because, you know, that's just to be another thing for me to enjoy. To I, mean, I, I mentioned earlier, I, I, I disliked how when, when enemies have hitboxes when they move. I don't think I elaborated on that. I was just talking kind of trailed off into aggressive versus non-aggressive gameplay but I, I hated that because that's what some enemies would do in Bloodborne like you know the notorious like super hard like um what was it again Orphan of Cost or something like that that boss fight is just people talk about how hard it is I think it's just I think it's just another example of a boss fight that's designed in a very horribly cheap way but people forgive it because it's made by FromSoft because again it has that whole issue of He's always moving, and whenever he's moving, he's just a big hitbox. That's, that's... On paper, that's like the cheapest thing ever. It's just, uh... I don't, I don't feel like it's a well-designed boss when the reason it's difficult is because you have almost no window to actually hit him safely on, and every window that he, that's not safe is just, don't get touched by him. And by the way, because then it becomes an endurance match, because you can't get much damage in at those points, and it's just, I never feel like endurance matches are, are even remotely fair. I mean, they, they, can, they can be, they'd have to be specifically designed around it, but I fucking hate endurance matches in the game, especially when, like, Bloodborne, where all the bosses kill you in, like, one or two hits. Well, like, not one or two, like, two or three hits, because they hit really fucking hard for some reason. You would think a game that, like, foregoes a lot of defense and has you attack more would have a lot more, would have a bit more forgiveness when you get hit, but I mean, you know, it's still beatable. I beat it on, <laughs> I beat it on the channel. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm kind of surprised. I feel like the damage done from, like, in Dark Souls and Bloodborne should almost be swapped. You can get hit a lot in Dark Souls before you die, but in Bloodborne, like I said, it's like two or three hits from a boss and you're dead. But, in, you know, in Dark Souls you have shields you can also use and stuff like that, in Bloodborne you can't. Plus, it's faster in Bloodborne, so it's like you have less time to react to things, and on top of having a shitty frame rate, on top of that, like an example of a game that has a frame rate as low as um, Bloodborne but doesn't feel like it's kind of cheap is uh, Breath of the Wild. All the enemies in that game generally have very slow and telegraphed attacks, and it's more a matter of timing than reaction. Whereas a slow frame rate really affects your reaction speed. A slow frame rate doesn't affect your timing anywhere near as much. Which, it's actually, it's kind of interesting because because of that, it didn't feel like uh, Breath of the Wild had as low a frame rate as Bloodborne, but when I checked later, it, it did, and even after knowing that, it still doesn't feel like it's that low, and I think it's just because 
the game design of Breath of the Wild caters more to a lower frame rate, whereas Bloodborne's just flat out doesn't, so it's a lot more noticeable, at least at least to me. And I know there's some people, there's other people that are like agree with me that like Bloodborne's not a good game. I see people tweet about it every now and then on Twitter. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, if you like that game, awesome. Continue liking that game. If it's good that you like that game. I just hope that when they make Bloodborne 2, it runs at 60 FPS. I can forgive a lot of the problems I have with the game if it just ran more smoothly. But I highly doubt that's going to happen because the PS Pro is out. And they made that game to run at 30 FPS on the PlayStation 4 before the Pro was even out. So why would they bother making one that works on the regular PS4 that runs higher than 30 FPS after the Pro is out? It's just, it's not going to happen and it's just going to be another big disappointment to me because I'm not going to buy a PS4 Pro just to make one or two games run better. But yeah. Anyway, that was my Bloodborne rant. Uh, feel free to hit that dislike button. I don't think that's, I don't think people are gonna be gnashing the dislike, but people are usually generally kind of cool about things like this. You, you occasionally run into the one guy that's like, fuck you, it was the best game, and you're stupid for not realizing that. Never be a game designer, etc., etc. There's always that one guy, but it's always just that one guy with like a megaphone. It makes it seem like there's more people. Most people are cool. And I, I'd love to hear somebody tell me why they think Bloodborne. If you like Bloodborne, tell me why you like it. Because I'd be really, really interested to get somebody else's perspective. Um. I just hope it's not like some of the other people's I hear. It's like, I hear people say things that are just objectively wrong about that game. Like, it's not even a matter of opinion. It's just like, I like it because it's, uh, I like it because the health regeneration system adds a lot to the game and it fucking doesn't. Like I mentioned before, you bring, like maybe they, maybe they grab the hunter axe at the start, which actually gives you twice as much. And maybe they use that through the whole game. In that circumstance, yes, it does. Yes, indeed. See, she agrees with me. The dark sign brands the undead. But uh, for the most part, it doesn't. You can get gems, I think, that make it... I don't know if it makes it better or if it makes it take longer. Another and thing with the health regen land. system is it only works to regenerate the last damage you took. The if you get hit multiple times, you can only regenerate the last bit. And there's so many enemies in that game that flail around a bunch and hit you a bunch of times. But then you can only get back like a fifth of the damage they, they did to you because you were hit five times. The first four the times, you, you can't heal back. I feel like the other generation would have been a lot better if they if they didn't have that limitation on it. This but, is but, your fate. But yeah, that's just what I think about Blood Bowl. Also, oh god, there's also why did they make us have to warp back to the under stream every time? Why is the grave stones used to warp around so unintuitive? In Dark Souls 2 and 3, they had pictures which made it really easy to tell what it was, but if you didn't memorize the name of everything uh, immediately when you went there, then trying to go back on Tombstone, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, where is it? And sometimes, like, you would think that, okay, well, the farther I progress in the game, there are probably going to be different tombstones. The, way, the place I want to go to is late in the game, so maybe I should use the fourth tombstone. But no, the place you want to go actually is a, a re, is like a revamp of an area you were at earlier, so you need to go to an early tombstone, and you need to remember its name. And it's just like, fucking Christ, I don't have time for this. Plus, you need to farm blood vials. Uh, I mean, a common argument that is just good, good and don't use as many. No, fuck you. First time playing through that game, coupled with its garbage frame rate and stuff like that, you're going to go through a lot of blood vials. And there's nothing worse than when you run out of blood vials. Um, when you're on a boss and you have to go and farm more and, and you can't like fight the boss again right away. Which, the thing that annoys me about that is that it's such an unnecessary system. They could just make it so it works like Dark Souls where you have one rest at the, at the thing and it's like, well Mike, you can get more blood vials and enemies drop them. So they, why would enemies dropping them make it so you can't get them at the thing? You just, you're just fully stocked whenever you rest at a lantern and if you use some on the way through an area and somebody drops some, you can just pick up more. And you can get those back. Or you can just have it work like the Souls game with the Estus Flask, or like, you know, sometimes you kill an enemy and, and like, you get an Estus Flask back. You just make it work more frequently in Bloodborne. It's like, why the fuck? It's like such a blatantly, obviously, objectively better system because it doesn't waste your time. I know, some people are like, well, it's, it's, a, better, it's a better punishment. No, it's not. 
wasting your time is never a good punishment in a game. Ever. Like, it, the not being able to progress is a good enough punishment in any game. Because people want to progress through a game. So, you know, their punishment is that, you, like, you can't move on until you've beaten this boss. So you failed, so you have to try again. You have to keep trying until you finally do it. Pu any punishment more than that is so unnecessary. I mean, like, the idea, you know, some, some kind of work because there's risk involved, but you can do that without wasting people's time. Like, think of souls and humanity in this game. If you fuck up getting back to it, you lose them. And it, it's a fair punishment because you have to do... All you have to do is you just have to do as good as you did last time to get them. But in Bloodborne, it's like, no, nah, okay, well, go back to that first area where there's, like, that blood vial farm run you can do over and over. Do that for two hours. Get, like, 200 blood vials so you don't have to worry about it for a while. And hope that you don't just get stuck on, like, two or three more bosses through your playthrough that takes, like, six times where you go through all your blood vials. It's just, like, fuck. It's such a horrible system. Why is it like that? They've done it perfectly in, in previous games, so why would they, why would they, why would they progress backwards? It makes no damn sense. I don't know. I mean, I think I think that's I think it's something that bugs me about Bloodborne the most is that it takes a lot of mechanics from the other games and just somehow makes them worse. When the, you've you've done them before, you should know how to do them right. Oh, well, either way, fucking like I said before, put <laughs> tell me what your favorite game is. Comments, tell me why. No judging. Um, Again, I shit on games, but I like I shit on a lot of games. I even shit on games I like, so don't worry. I'm not like attacking your tastes. I just naturally have high expectations of games and I'm very nitpicky with a lot of mechanics because usually if I can think of an example of it done better, I question why it wasn't just copied. You know what I mean? Either way, I've rambled on about this for like 10 minutes, like literally through the whole credits and stuff like that. So I'm just going to end the video here because I don't want to progress further without starting a whole new episode and stuff. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Fucking. <laughs> Please don't hit the dislike button. <laughs> Bye.